All around the world, from China to Europe and across to the United States, governments and commercial enterprises are all starting to get a bit giddy and excited about the prospect of electric vehicles displacing internal combustion engines in the coming years. The UK Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, announced last month that he's banning the sale of the fossil fuel burners by 2030. Tesla's opening gigafactories all over the place and all the major existing car manufacturers are emailing all their staff to find out if anyone knows anything about batteries. That last one might be a slight exaggeration, but it is fair to say that it is batteries that represent the biggest challenge to the green transport revolution. After all, the rest of the car is a car, isn't it? We've been building those for 100 years. Elon Musk's company is a long way ahead of the game, of course, having been focused 100% on electric vehicle development for well over a decade now. His last Battery Day event revealed some pretty nifty advances, including tabless battery construction to speed up production, pure silicon anodes, and greatly reduced quantities of cobalt. And he's talking about fitting the batteries more tightly around the car's body too, so that it can provide extra structural support. Whichever way you look at it though, a whole bunch of heavy battery packs attached to your vehicle represents a very large proportion of the overall weight and a significant drain on energy efficiency. Batteries in a typical EV can account for as much as a third of the total mass of the vehicle. By stark contrast, the fuel in an internal combustion engine car only makes up about 3% of the mass. But what if you didn't need to bolt the batteries to any part of the bodywork at all? What if the bodywork itself provided all the energy the car needed? Well, that's exactly what's happening in the rapidly developing world of structural batteries. Hello and welcome to Just Have a Think. We all know how commonplace lithium ion batteries are nowadays, not just in electric vehicles, but in pretty much all electronic devices from your phone to your laptop to power tools and kids toys. Last week the folks over at Wired magazine published a fascinating article highlighting a new renaissance in structural battery research that could pave the way for effectively weightless and invisible batteries powering everything around us. The Wired team interviewed Emil Greenhalgh, a materials scientist at Imperial College London. He and his team have been developing this technology for several years. Back in 2010, they collaborated with a materials scientist called Leif Asp at the Chalmers University of Technology in Sweden, along with a team of European scientists on an EU-funded project called Storage that worked with Volvo to make structural batteries into some of the body parts of one of their hybrid prototypes to provide some of the secondary power for the air conditioning, the sound system and the lights. Today's rapid advances in composite materials, battery science and microscopic precision engineering mean that we're now a whole lot closer to a world where structural batteries may provide all of the power for a vehicle or device, which would represent a really significant step change in size, weight and energy efficiency. It's not been an easy ride though. Convincing a battery to keep working when it's been bent and stretched into all sorts of weird and wonderful shapes is a very difficult thing to do. We looked at how conventional lithium ion batteries work in a recent video. Essentially, you've got a cathode and an anode, some sort of electrolyte and a separator to prevent short circuiting. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, including pouches like these, and they can even be rolled up into a cylinder, which is what Tesla used for their vehicles. But all these designs share a common feature, which is that the anode and the cathode are precisely aligned so that electrons can flow between them. If you lose that alignment, you lose your circuit. Ji Zhao, the chief scientist and manager of the Batteries and Materials System Group at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, explained the problem to the Wired team. She said, from a design point of view, it's very important that your positive and negative electrodes face each other. So even if we can take advantage of void spaces, if those electrodes are unaligned, they're not participating in the chemical reaction. This limits the designs of irregular shaped structural batteries. So how have the Imperial team got around that little wrinkle? Well, they started with good old carbon fibre, which is very light and extremely strong and already widely used for all sorts of applications, including body panels in aircraft and high performance cars. It also has the distinct advantage of being very good at storing lithium ions, which means it's a great candidate to replace the graphite anode in a lithium ion battery. But Greenhouch and Asp needed the structural strength of carbon fibre across the whole area of the battery which meant it needed to do the work of the cathode as well. To achieve that, 
they infuse the carbon fiber with iron phosphate, which is good and reactive and also strong. They used a thin sheet of woven glass as a separator and then encased the whole thing in a conductive polymer resin, which acts as a binder to keep everything aligned while also transferring load from one layer to another to give it that all important structural integrity. And of course, keep the circuit flowing even when the panel is cut and shaped. The result is a very strong and very thin sheet material that can be molded to any required panel shape. That technology has been put to use in a more recent EU Horizons project called Sorcerer, which developed structural lithium ion batteries that could be used to build parts of an aircraft's fuselage or wings. The relentless research and development that's taken place during the last decade since the original storage project has resulted in vast improvements in the mechanical properties and energy density of the latest versions of the battery material. ASP told Wired magazine, now we can make materials that have at least 20 to 30% of both energy storage capacity and the mechanical capacity of the systems we want to replace. It's a huge progression. And they're not the only ones looking at structural batteries as a solution to electric flight. MIT's Aero Astro department have also been developing their own structural battery solution. This 2018 presentation by Kieran Strobel outlined the challenges that needed to be overcome. Batteries present the same problem in planes as they do in cars, which is to say they're very heavy. And that's annoying if you're in a car, but it's even more problematic if you want to actually get your vehicle off the ground. This is a Kitty Hawk Cora electric plane, which has been designed as an air taxi of the not too distant future. Its batteries represent 17% of the overall weight. This chart shows where batteries currently sit in terms of specific energy, which is a measure of how much energy a battery contains relative to its weight. You can see they've come quite a long way since 2010. The Kitty Hawk's batteries can now deliver 220 watt hours per kilogram. That does get it airborne, but not for long. It's generally reckoned that those batteries would need to pump out more like 400 watt hours per kilo to make an air taxi service like this commercially viable. MIT's approach is to flip that equation on its head. Rather than striving to increase battery energy to that new level, their goal is to bring that threshold back down to where it is today by making their structural batteries become components of the plane's body. That brings the 400 watt hours requirement right back down to about 210 watt hours, which is well within current capability. We won't be flying across the Atlantic in one of these things anytime soon, but for urban hops and short haul flights, they do look like a very promising solution. The MIT team reckon there's huge potential at the other end of the scale too, with electronic devices like mobile phones, which today are basically a big battery surrounded by some tiny components. They're making the phone housing into a structural battery, and that reduces the thickness of an iPhone from just over seven millimeters today to just under five millimeters. And if it wasn't for the onboard camera, the device could be even thinner. Back at the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, Xi Jiao and her team are also focusing on structural batteries for microelectronics, specifically for medical implants. Xiao told Wired that while conventional batteries can already be shrunk to the size of a grain of rice, that's still very bulky in really tiny devices, but a structural battery doesn't take up any more space than the device itself. Xiao and her team have worked on several niche scientific applications for microstructural batteries, like injectable tracking tags for salmon and bats. In the future, they're aiming for products like electronic skin for prosthetics, which will be able to sense temperature, pressure and sound, just like a normal human skin can. That sort of thing isn't too far away from the robotics industry. And sure enough, structural batteries are being looked at there too. A team at Michigan University, led by chemical engineer Nicholas Kotov, have created a zinc air structural battery for their research machines. They don't use carbon fiber like the Imperial College team. Instead, they have a zinc anode, a manganese oxide coated carbon cloth cathode, and a semi-rigid electrolyte made from polymer-based nanofibers that they've engineered to behave like cartilage. That electrolyte also has the benefit of preventing dendrite growth from the zinc anode, which could otherwise cause a catastrophic short circuit in the battery. The energy is carried by hydroxide ions produced when oxygen in the air interacts with the zinc. The team's goal is to create machines with power sources that can integrate with their robotic skeletons, just like the fat and muscle in animals. And they've already got working examples of robotic scorpions, spiders, ants, and caterpillars in their lab test area. 
Kotov and his team published their paper earlier in 2020 showing that their structural batteries effectively have 72 times the energy capacity of a conventional lithium ion cell of the same volume. Their plan is to develop the technology for use in mid-sized robots and large hobby drones. There's still some way to go before these things become commonplace, but the proof of concept is definitely there in several research places. One of the best ways to save energy and reduce greenhouse gas emissions is simply not to use the energy in the first place, and these new structural batteries could play a major role in achieving that goal. Leave your thoughts in the description box below, but that's it for this week. Just a quick note from my friends at Bubbler before I go. They tell me they've made some improvements to the Just Have A Thing app navigation buttons that should make it even easier for you to find new tabs. If you've already got the app, check that updates are set to automatic. And if you haven't got the app yet, then you can download it from the App Store or Google Play. Thanks to our fantastic Patreon supporters who help keep the channel independent and keep these videos ad free. And a shout out to all the folks who've joined since last time with pledges of $10 or more a month. They are Mason Rawson, Esben Vadstrup, Jean-Denis Gingra, Tom Von Sild, Isaac Pasakanis, Rachel Fish, Ian Angles, Molly Payne, Mono Schwarz Kogelnik, Jonathan Glazer, and Colin Stroud. And a huge thank you to everyone else who's joined since last time too. You can support the channel for about the price of a coffee and receive exclusive monthly news updates from me, plus content polls, to choose each month's topics by visiting www.patreon.com forward slash just have a think. And of course, you can hugely support the channel absolutely for free by subscribing and hitting that like button. And if you want to be notified about new content each week, then make sure you hit that little bell icon too. Dead easy to subscribe. You just need to click down there or on that icon there. As always, thanks very much for watching. Have a great week. And remember to just have a think. See you next week.